right, so we are moving into lesson four. So la before break, okay, we talked about algebra and how to solve e or expressions, not equations just yet. So we've been working with expressions. Remember, expressions have no equal sign, and they're sometimes written like this. They could be numerical or algebraic. So you can either have 2 plus 3, that's numerical, or you can have x plus 3. Okay, that's an algebraic expression. That's what we worked on before we went on break. So today, now we're going to be doing uh, algebraic expressions, but we're going to write our own. Okay, so they're going to give you a problem, and they want you to write it out and then solve it. So right here. Missouri has eight major commercial airports. California has 24 commercial airports. So number one, Alabama has four fewer airports than Missouri. So letter part A, they want you to underline the key math word in the problem. Okay, looking at this, what do you think the key math term is? Fewer. Fewer. And you can even in include fewer than. Then works as well. But fewer is the one we're looking at. Now they want you to circle the operation you would use to determine how many airports are located in Alabama. So which one are we gonna circle here? What operation are we gonna do? Subtraction. Subtraction. So if we're doing fewer than, we're trying to find fewer than, fewer than means subtraction. All right, so now, why are we doing subtraction? Because eight minus four is four and four. Um, it says that uh, Missouri has eight major commercial airplanes and Alabama has four fewer, so that's like eight minus four. So we're talking about fewer. Fewer is means subtraction. That's all you have to put. Fewer or fewer than means subtraction. Okay, so those are the type of words you got to look at. Okay, that's, those are key words they want you to look at to figure out what operation you're doing. Okay, this next one's kind of tricky. Sometimes it stumps people by the way it is worded. So California has three times as many airports as Georgia. So the first part is we have to underline the key math term. So what are we going to underline here? Back three times. So you want to include that three on that. Three times. Now, it says circle the operation you would use to find out how many how many airports Georgia has. So what operation are we going to do? Nope. Black division. Because we are trying to find out how many Georgia has, and it says that California has three times as many. So we're going to have to divide to find Georgia. Because... Like I said, we know how many Cali has. Wow, that's terrible. So we know how many Cali has, but we know that we got to find Georgia, so we have to undo the multiplication by doing division. So we undo the multiplication by division. It's all about how it's worded. So this says California has three times as many as Georgia. The question asks us though to find out how many uh, airports were in Georgia, not California. Now, if it asks us what was for California, what operation will we use? Um, multiplication. multiplication okay because it says three times but it's all about what they're asking you so you have to read it all the way through all right now down here missouri has two times as many airports as ohio how many airports does ohio have so what operation we're going to do here zach division. division because we're trying to figure out ohio missouri has two times as many so we have to divide so what's eight divided by two four, four. Okay, once you have that, go ahead and go on to the next page.
All right, so we're going to write phrases as algebraic expressions. So whenever you do this, to write verbal ex uh, phrases as algebraic expressions, you have to follow the steps below. In the second step, defining the variable. That means you're just choosing a, ver a letter and then deciding what it represents. Okay, that's defining a variable. So whenever I say that, we literally just pick a letter and then tell us what it means. So we always start by reading the phrase and underlining the most important words, choose a variable to represent the unknown, and then translate it into an algebraic expression. So this is what they're going to give you. $8 more than Ryan earned. Okay. So first off, let's underline what's important here. What word is important for math? See? More than. Right there. Okay. So we know that that's important. Now, what is the unknown? What do we not know in this, this phrase? How much Ryan earned. So that's what your variable represents. Okay. So I'm going to just put R for Ryan. So literally, this is what you do. You put R equals how much Ryan earned. So we just defined the variable. R equals how much Ryan earned. So we're going to use R for our expression, just like they did last week or last uh, lesson. So what does more than mean? What are we doing? What operation? Hold. No. Addition. So we're going to be adding, okay? So basically, since it's $8 more than Ryan earned, you're going to do what Ryan earned, R, because we don't know that, plus, because it's addition. Now, what number was it? $8. $8. So we just put 8. R plus 8. That's it. That's all I want you to do. You're not solving it. You're not doing anything like that right now. You're just writing it out. Okay, so there's three steps. First step, you have to read the phrase underline the most important terms then you need to define the variable and then you write out the expression so number two ten dollars less than the original price so what are the important words here less than okay now we have to define our variable what's the unknown what do we not know what do we not know What do we not know? The price of food. The original price. Okay, so we don't know the original price. So that's our variable. You can use any letter you want, but usually you try to pick a letter that that is a like this, O or P. I'm talking about price or O for original. Okay, I'm going to use P for price. So P equals original price. So we just defined our variable. So that's our second step. Now, the last step is to just draw or write out our equation or expression. So what does less than mean? What operation? Subtraction. Subtraction. So this is going to be read as P, because that's the unknown, minus $10. So just 10, P minus 10. And that's it. All right, any questions so far? All right, let's go on to the next page. Okay, number three, four times the number of gallons. Okay, so first off, it says words. Four times the number of what? Gallons. Gallons. All right, now we have to define our, or underline the word that is most important here for math. What is the math term that's important? Times. times, four times. Okay, now, what is the unknown? What do we not know? Cole? How many? How many gallons? How many, how, the number of gallons, okay? So we're going to put G. So it says let G represent... The number of gallons. That's what you would put. That's how you define a variable. 
you tell us what it represents. So G represents the number of gallons because we don't know how many gallons they used. Now, if you model this, okay, there, there is an option to model it. That's totally up to you. You do not have to. Since it says four times the number of gallons, that means there's going to be four Gs. Okay, so that's how you'd model it. Now, to write the expression, what operation are we doing? Zach? Oh. G um, times four. Okay, so G times four. Now, to write that, you want to write it like we do in algebra. So you're going to write 4G, just like that. That means multiplication, four times G, but it's read as 4G. All right? So that's how you do the multiplication ones. So let's go over to page 465. So 465. The number one, or the directions say, define a variable and then write each phrase as an algebraic expression. So we have to follow our steps. So number one, six feet less than the width. So first off, let's underline the key ter math terms. Less than. Less than. Now we have to, to divine, define our variable. What's the unknown? What do we not know from this situation, Stevie? Mm -hmm. The width. So I'm going to put W equals the width. We just defined our variable because we didn't know what the width was, so I just assigned W for it. You could have done X. You could have done B. You can do whatever you want. I just like to pick a letter that kind of fits in with the, uh, the phrase. Okay, now the next part is we have to write out our algebraic expression. So what does less than mean? What operation? Subtraction. Subtraction. So it's going to be read as W minus 6 because this is 6 feet less than the width. So you have to start with the W. Okay, since it's less than the width, you have to subtract that number away from W. So it's W minus 6. All right, let's do number two. Six hours more per week than Theodore studies. So first off, what are we going to underline? Zach? What's the key ta math term here? Oh, look up here. Which one would it be? Zach, what is it? More. More. So more than. Okay, so... Now we have to define a variable. What's the variable? What do we not know? What was it? Not more. There you go. So how many hours did Theodore study? That is the def or the variable. So you can use H, you use T, you use S, whatever you want. I'm going to use H. H equals hours theodore study okay so that's the definite so we define a variable now we have to write our expression so what does more than mean what's more than mean jake what's more than mean what operation um, addition, addition. Okay, so if it's six hours more than Theodore studies, what's this expression going to start with? What do we start with? H. H. What's the next part? Plus six. plus six. And there you go. H plus six. That's it. They don't want you to solve it. They just want you to write it out. So you have to have both parts here. You got to have the variable. You got to have the expression. Any questions so far? All right, let's go back. I want you guys to do A, B, and C. So take your time. So define a variable, then write your expression. So it's on page 463. A, B, and C right in the middle of the page. I'll give you a couple minutes. Go ahead and get started. So letter A. 
Okay, it says four points fewer than the Bulls scored. So what's the key math term we're going to underline here? What's the key math term that we'd underline, Jake? Fewer than. Okay, so we underline that. So that's important for later. Now, what is the unknown? What do we not know? The, uh, How much the Bulls scored. So what, uh, what is our variable going to represent? Nope, the variable. What's the variable going to be? That letter. What's the variable going to be? Camden? Okay, so what's it mean? We're going to need a little bit more than that, not just the bulls. So add to that a little bit. There you go. So B equals the bull score. Okay, so that's what that represents. Now... What operation are we doing? What's fewer than mean? Subtraction. Subtraction. So we're going to do B minus 4. Okay? Any questions on that one? All right, letter B. 12 times the number of feet. All right, so what is the key term here? Time. Times. Okay, what's the unknown? What do we not know? The number of feet. So you could use N, you could use F, whatever you want to use. I'm going to use F. F equals number of feet. Okay? So now we've defined our variable. Now we can write our expression. So what does times mean? Multiplication. Multiplication. So what is this going to look like? What is our expression look like here, Cole? Times 12. Okay, so how would we write that? Uh, F and then... Remember how, how we do it in algebra now? Oh, first we do that. Oh, how do we do it earlier? Look back up. You're close. You flipped it. 12 always goes first. The number always goes first, then the variable. So 12F. 12 times F. So now that we're in algebra, this is how we need to start writing that. Okay, so that's how you represent multiplication with variables. All right, letter C. The total cost of a shirt in an $8 pair of pants. All right, so what is the key math term here? Does anybody know? Well, you're close. That's part of it. What else could it be? What else could it be? Anybody have an idea? Not total cost. And. And means to add. Okay, so that's another one they'll sneak in there. It should be. That's not on that one. Okay, once you once you start seeing and like they're like the total cost of two items, that means addition. You're trying to add it up to find the total cost. So, what's the unknown? What do we not know here? Total cost of the shirt. So, I'm going to put C equals cost of the shirt. That's what that one represents. Okay, so you have to have this and the expression. So, now, what did we say end means? What operation? Just say it. No. What does end mean? What operation? Addition. Okay, so we're doing addition. So what is this expression going to start with? What do we start with? The C. Then we put our addition, and then we add on the pair of socks, that $8. So C plus 8. So that's how these work. So you have to define the variable, then you do the expression, all right? Now, those were one operation, so one step. So we had one operation where we had addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, one of them. Now we're going to be doing two steps. So we're going to have two operations. So number four says write the phrase five less than three times the number of points as an algebraic expression. So looking at that, what do you see as a key math term? Both of them. So less than and times. 
So we're going to be doing what? What's less than mean? So we're going to be doing subtraction. What's times mean? Multiplication. So we're going to be doing subtraction and multiplication here. So there's two of them. But first, we still have to define our variable. What is the unknown here? What do we not know? The what? Number of points. We don't know what that is. That's why we have to use a variable. So I'm going to put n equals number of points. So since this is a two-step, okay, it's two-step, we always start with the multiplication, all right? We're going to start with that first. So this is three times the number of points. How is that going to be written? How do we write three times the number of points? Because we don't know the number of points. It's going to be multiplication. So what's it look like? What are you multiplying? What two things? Not five. Because it says five less than three times the number of points. So what is that telling you to multiply? Three times the number of points. What's it going to look like? And in what? So read that. Three times the number of points. How would that be written? Yeah. Three times n. So three n. That's the first part. Then we said less than was what? So minus. And then we put our five. Three n minus five. That's how that one's written. Okay. That's a two step. So in these, you normally start out with the multiplication and division. Then you do the addition or subtraction. So let's go back to page 365. We're going to do a couple more of those. So number one or number four. Two less than one third of the. Actually, I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that to five times the number of points. So this is right as two less than five times the number of points that the Panthers scored. Okay, key terms, what are they? Less than times. Less than times. Okay, so now we have to define a variable. What do we not know in this situation? What do we not know? Yeah, how many points the Panthers scored? So I'm going to put P equals uh, Panthers score. So that's our variable. That's how we define it. Okay, now we can start working on our expression. So remember, we always start with multiplying or dividing. So what are we going to start with first? What does it look like? Cole? Five times what? P. Five times P. Five P. That's how we write it. What does less than mean? Uh, subtraction. subtraction. What are we subtracting? Uh, two. two. Five P minus two. That's it. You're not solving anything. They just want you to write it out, guys. That's it. So let's go back and I want you guys to do letter D. Down at the bottom of page 463. So write this one out, define your variable, and then write your expression. Take your time. I'll give you a few minutes. So it says write the phrase $3 more than four times the cost of a pretzel as an algebraic expression. So looking at this, okay, what are the key math terms here? What's one of them? What's one of the key math terms that we should underline, Stevie? More than. Okay, what's the other one? Cole? Four times. Four times. So those two are important. So those are our two operations. Okay, so now we have to define our variable. So what's our variable represent? What's the unknown? What do we not know the number of? The cost of a pretzel. Okay, so I'm literally going to put C equals cost of a pretzel. All 
All right, so now, okay, what does more than mean? What operation? Addition. Addition. What's four times mean? Multiplication. multiplication. So we're going to start with the multiplication. So it says four times the cost of a pretzel. What's that look like? Four times C, so four C. Okay, and we said more than means addition, so we are adding. And then what do we add on? What's left? The $3. Three. Four C plus three. Any questions on this one? All right, one more. So let's go ahead and go to the next page. All right, so it's just a story problem. So the only difference here is if this is a real world example. So Terry bought a magazine for $5 and two bottles of nail polish. Write an expression to represent the total amount she, she spent. Then find the amount if each bottle of nail polish costs $3. So first off, you have to write your expression, okay? So if she bought a magazine for $5 and two bottles of nail polish, okay, do we, what do we not know? What's the unknown? The, uh, so from that first sentence, what do we not know? The cost of the nail polish. Okay, so I'm going to put in equals cost of nail polish. Okay, so now, it's, so like I said, Terry bought a magazine for $5 and two bottles of mail, nail polish. So what operations are we doing here? There's two of them. Which ones are we using, Cole? And for, uh, so that's, there's one. So we're adding because we're trying to find the total cost. What's the other one we're going to use? So if she bought two bottles of nail polish, but we don't know how much she spent. How are we re representing that? How do we represent that? Multiplication. Okay, so we're going to do 2 times N because we don't know how much she spent. So she bought two bottles for so much per bottle. That's what we don't know. And then we said that since we're trying to find the total cost, we're adding. And then we're just going to add that $5 on for the magazine. So now... We have our expression. The last part of this is they want you to solve it. So they tell you that the nail polish costs $3 a piece. So 3 represents N. So you replace N with 3. So what's 2 times 3? Plus 5. What's 6 plus 5? 11. So she spent $11. That's it. So you still did the same thing. They just added one more thing to it because you had to solve it. All right. So you got a little bit of time for your homework. And your homework is on IXL, Y2, Y3. So sixth grade math, Y2, Y3. Remember, you have to get in sixth grade math. Otherwise, they do not count. I will go through and star them. So it's just what we just finished up. 